For my junior research project, I chose to do a report on a case that I saw back at Children's Hospital in July. Um, this was done with faculty mentor Jason Rhodes, as well as residents Alex Lencioni and Brady Williams. Briefly, this is the case of a 15-year-old male who sustained a irreducible posterior lateral knee dislocation after a uh, motorized bike accident that failed multiple close reduction attempts in the ED. This is a rare injury, and to our knowledge, interposition of an avulsed MCL as a mechanical block to reduction of a dislocated knee has not previously been described in the literature. Some brief background on knee dislocations that they are pretty rare and typically high energy traumatic injury and represent one of pretty few emergencies in orthopedics due to the risk of a compromised blood supply. Knee dislocations account for between 1 in 10 per 100,000 hospital admissions and less than 0.02% of all musculoskeletal injuries. Kennedy and colleagues were the first to classify knee dislocations based on the direction of the dislocation uh, of the tibia relative to the femur being anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, or rotational. Among these, rotational is the rarest of the five types and most commonly posterior medial, and they're almost always irreducible to close reduction. Uh, it's typically due to interposition of soft tissues in the knee joint, most commonly at the medial aspect, such as the medial capsule, meniscus, or the vastus medialis. In this report, we described the case of a healthy 15-year-old with an irreducible rotational posterior lateral knee dislocation due to incarceration of his avulsed MCL. Uh, from what we could find in the literature, this mechanism has not previously been described. So the patient is a 15-year-old, otherwise healthy, presented to the emergency department with a left knee dislocation after a motorized dirt bike accident. On initial presentation at an outside hospital, he had significant infusion to the knee um, and was locked in 20 degrees of flexion. He's closed and uh, neurovascularly intact distally with 2 plus DP and PT pulses and brisk cap refill. Um, a ABIs and CTA of the left lower extremity were demonstrated low concern for vascular injury. Uh, close reduction was attempted at that outside facility but uh, was unsuccessful. At that point, the patient was placed into a long leg splint in his locked 20 degrees of flexion and transferred to a, uh, our tertiary care center for ongoing management of his injury. Um, upon arrival, he was still neurovascularly intact uh, with palpable DP and PT pulses and ABIs greater than 0.9. Uh, the patient then underwent another attempted close reduction in the ED, which again demonstrated a mechanical block to full extension. At that point, he was resplinted and sent for an MRI of the knee to evaluate for ligamentous injuries and identify uh, any mechanical blocks to reduction. MRI findings shown in figure one here uh, demonstrated complete tears of the ACL and PCL uh, with associated tibial eminence avulsion fracture, uh, complete tear of the MCL, sprain of the LCL, and then some uh, potential tearing of the, the medial and lateral menisci, an avulsion fracture of the lateral femoral condyle um, at the popliteus origin, and soft tissue swelling and hemarthrosis. Based on the MRI findings, the decision was made to proceed with operative intervention for the knee dislocation. Under general anesthesia, multiple manipulation attempts were made, but the knee was not able to be concentrically reduced. An 18-gauge needle was used through an inferior lateral portal to aspirate about 30 cc's of bloody fluid from the knee. Manipulation was again attempted without successful concentric reduction of the knee. Um, Based upon this, the decision was made to proceed with uh, an arthroscopy to evaluate what was blocking reduction. After standard prepping and draping, a uh, diagnostic knee scope was started. Uh, most notably on the scope, the medial compartment was very difficult to visualize due to the, the avulsed MCL being wrapped over the medial femoral condyle, kind of blocking visualization of the medial compartment. This is demonstrated in figure two. After a fairly significant amount of effort, the, the avulsed MCL was able to be removed from the compartment with a probe. At that time, the knee was immediately clinically reduced, and this was confirmed with fluoroscopy, and those images can be seen in figure four. The rest of the diagnostic scope was completed um, and confirmed the other injuries seen on MRI. The patient was placed into a hinge knee brace locked in full extension and was discharged from the hospital on post-operative day one. 
Ten days later, patient returned to the operating room for definitive management of his multi-leg knee injury. He underwent a, a left knee PCL reconstruction and tibial spine avulsion, arthroscopic assisted reduction in internal fixation, as well as open repair of his MCL. He was discharged from the PACU from that procedure in a hinge knee brace, again locked in extension. At his two-week post-op clinic appointment, he was following the expected course, complying with his rehab protocol uh, with no new repeat dislocations or injuries. At that visit, he was weight-bearing as tolerated, locked in extension. At this time, he was allowed to flex to 45 degrees with physical therapy only. At four weeks post-op, uh, his range of motion was planned for incremental increase uh, of his flexion by 15 degrees per week. At his six-month post-op visit, he was still following the expected recovery course and progressing through his home exercise therapy program. His range of motion at that visit was 0 to 135 degrees of flexion with no extensor lag on a straight leg raise test. Ligamentous testing showed a 1A Lachman's with a 1 to 2 millimeter difference from the contralateral side. He had 1A anterior and posterior drawer testing and 1 plus laxity to valgus stress at 0 degrees and no laxity noted at full extension. The plan at that time was to continue to work with physical therapy on return to sport testing with follow-up planned at 9 months after surgery, which is coming up shortly. So in summary, we uh, present a case of a rare MCL avulsion off the medial femoral condyle causing a mechanical block to reduction after an acute traumatic knee dislocation, which was treated successfully with an arthroscopic assisted reduction and then a staged multi-ligament reconstruction. Uh, while to the author's knowledge there are no other similar cases, this case represents a successful strategy to treat acute pediatric knee dislocations. While knee dislocations have a wide variety of presentations, including multi-leg injuries, vascular injuries, associated fractures, recurrent instability, possibly even requiring external fixation, it is ultimately most important to ensure the knee is concentrically reduced before determining definitive plans for fixation. I again want to thank Dr. Rhodes for his mentorship for this project, as well as my co-residents Alex Lencioni and Brady Williams for their contributions. And I will uh, direct you to my references for any questions about the source of the information. Um, thanks for listening.